A very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this 48th edition of the Together for Education webinars brought to you by Notebook. It has been our privilege and a place of pride to host these events week after week and have such fantastic thought leaders and such great educators come on this platform to share their thoughts. Today, we tackle an interesting topic, which is staying ahead. We have always known that staying ahead was important to us. Years ago, when Moore's law came out, we knew that technology was going to double itself every 1.8 years. However, over the last few months, it has become imperative to stay ahead of every curve possible, even the ones that we flatten. We are today talking about staying ahead in terms of our health. We are talking about staying ahead in terms of adoption of technologies. We are talking about staying ahead in terms of figuring out what to do when schools reopen. Today, we have a fantastic panel lined up for you. So without taking much time, we will soon start with them. Before we do so, I take this opportunity to introduce Notebook to you. For those of you who don't know, Notebook is an edtech brand. We make short, crisp videos for every topic in the school curriculum and then present them to teachers and students for their use. Teachers find these videos useful when they're taking their classes either online or offline. And they can use these videos to explain topics in a more visual way to their students. The students themselves find these useful as months later when they have to prepare for an exam. They refer back to these videos and can get a quick memorization or get a quick memory aid of what was taught in the class by the teacher that day. I will now take just a couple of minutes to show you a small clip of one of the notebook videos before we start today's session. Did you know that when we open our mouth, it is always the lower jaw that moves? Try to keep your lower jaw still and move just the upper jaw. Your head will move back as the joint is fixed. So many bones in our body, some we can touch and feel. But can you touch all 206? To get a better understanding of our bone structure, we use the X-ray machine. That gives us a picture of the bones inside the body. Have you ever seen an X-ray plate? A doctor takes a look at these plates to understand if a bone is broken or displaced. In an X-ray, we can see the many small bones in our wrists that make them so flexible. These are called carpals. The skeleton also helps in keeping the vital organs safe. The heart and lungs are kept secure inside the rib cage, bones of the chest and the backbone. You can feel both with your fingers. Hold your breath for a few seconds and touch the part of your chest. Can you feel the weirdly bent bone? That's a rib. There are 12 ribs on each side of the chest. These ribs are attached at the back of the backbone. The backbone is made up of 33 small bones called the vertebrae. They help us arch our back. Do you feel something hard and pokey on either side of your back? Those are the shoulder bones. Similarly, the hard bone on which you sit is called the pelvic bone. The part of the skeleton that we usually show to scare people, the skull, is made of many joined bones that protect the brain. Other than bones, we have cartilages and muscles that also help in movement. Cartilages are not as hard as bones, but not as soft as flesh. Touch the top of your ear or the tip of your nose. Can you feel a flexible part that you can easily bend? Those are the cartilages. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was a short clip from one of the many notebook videos. Today, Notebook has more than 10,000 of these videos at your disposal so that learning can become more fun and easier. With that said, it is now time to move on to our first speaker today. Our first speaker of the day is Mr. Burrett. Mr. Philip Burrett retired as the deputy headmaster from the Dune School in Dehradun after 44 years of serving in education across various institutions. He served the Dune School as housemaster, head of department, dean of student welfare, dean of activities, deputy headmaster, second master, and acting headmaster with great distinction. He also carried out a visioning exercise for the Dune School in the year 2011 through an in-depth study of a number of British public schools and various schools in the US. 
Mr. Barrett qualified as a leadership trainer at Wellington College UK in the year 2000. He's also an athlete, an adventurer, and a naturalist. Sir, privileged to have you with us. Over to you. Good evening, uh, Shabayu, and thank you. Am I audible, Shabayu? Yes, sir, loud and clear. Yeah. Thank you so much, and uh, in evening to, um, uh, to Achin and Abhishek and the entire notebook team. Also to Mrs. Bhargav, Mr. Swami, and Sripada on our panel, and our guests who have tuned in. So I know that the esteemed panelists are going to take this uh, issue into um, uh, primarily the, the, idea, the area of schools. So I am going to um, uh, 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 look at schools as well as teachers. <clears throat> so when I, when I read the topic, <clears throat> staying ahead, <clears throat> pardon me, I asked myself, staying ahead of what, of who? And the picture of an athlete came to mind, uh, staying ahead of competition, of course, staying ahead of what we were yesterday, uh, staying ahead of others in the business. And the opposite of staying ahead uh, is staying where we were yesterday. And this means stagnation. It means a lack of progress. Uh, so whatever I say today applies to both schools as well as teachers. Now, in the world of education, both schools and teachers, <clears throat> we tend to fall into a rut. And life goes on and uh, everything falls into place. Uh, the school makes a name in the locality, the community, the town and the state. But <clears throat> what happens is that we gradually get into a rut and we get redundant and we get less relevant than we were originally. Now, what schools do not realize is that we need to stay ahead of the competition in this dog eat dog world of ours. I have seen good institutions, great institutions who have made a splash, made a name for themselves only to fade away because they couldn't stay ahead of the curve. Now, talking about a curve, they say that in businesses, that in, in, in institutions and in companies, uh, there is a, a cycle of seven years. Uh, and each seven years, the curve starts to fall. Now, it is at this juncture when things begin to fall, where we need to rethink and start to rise again. Otherwise, I've seen schools dip and just go redundant. Um, after all, even logos and catchphrases and brandings change for companies like Tata's and Mahindra's and Alida's. Schools too need to reinvent themselves. Now at the Doon School, <clears throat> we used to have a five-year visionary exercise that I was very fortunate to be involved in, where each year, uh, each, each five years, we sat down and envisioned and plotted for ourselves against the best in the world. And we studied the best practices of other institutions so that we could form subcommittees for infrastructure, academics, teacher development, et cetera. And, each, and this would take a period of five years. So we had a vision of where we were going. And after five years, we'd reset and plan for the next five years. Now from these revisioning exercises emerged the need to move to an international examination, how we employed staff, how we interviewed our new incoming students, and so many new changes took place because of these revisioning uh, exercises. Unfortunately, today's parents shop for schools in the way they shop for cars and houses. They're taken around these schools, shown facilities, shown all the CC cameras and air conditioning. And <clears throat> what they do miss out on is they don't see the stuff, the quality of the teachers, which is the real, uh, the crux of the matter. Uh, total quality management and the way parents are met and handled right from the receptionist to the head of school goes a long way in enhancing the image of the school. Now, in my view, staying ahead is all about reading the future and providing an education that is relevant for the world tomorrow. Now, over the last seven months, schools that were ahead of the rest in the area of digital learning are today ahead of their fellow schools. And it is not about getting the latest cutting edge technology, but it, it is about finding the technology that best meets this particular school's needs. Teachers have realized in such a short time what principals have been screaming about for years, which is get tech savvy. Now, necessity being the mother of invention, uh, teachers have coped, but anticipating the future is what helps one to stay ahead. Another way of staying ahead is through ongoing faculty training. 
Now, teachers take a training, become teachers, and for the next 30 years, continue in this rut that I spoke about. We have to have, you know, we, we've spoken in our webinars so much about counseling and mental health, and yet each of our teachers could become a mental health expert. I don't know why they don't. It, it is easy to move ahead by investing in materials and the hardware of schools, but it is more difficult to stay ahead of the game through quality faculty and quality staff. And at the end of the day, this is what counts. The type of instruction, the modernization of the classroom is also a way of staying ahead. Now, when I visit um, <clears throat> uh, types of um, schools, I see that some of the classrooms are designed in exactly the same way as they were in England, you know, post the Second World War, straight lines and you know, blackboards in front. Today's method of instruction and learning is so different because the modern employer wants a different type of employee. Now the need of the R being creative thinking and problem solving, we need to teach in another way. And are we ahead? Are we getting ahead of other schools in creating a different and newer type of learning environment? Staying ahead also is about leadership. It boils down to how the school is led. What is the vision of the people who run the school? Now, what sort of school heads are being entrusted to run these institutions? I've seen firsthand great schools being taken down through a lack of vision and poor leadership and someone with a backward or traditional mindset. Now, <clears throat> headmasters too and principals too come and go. They have a small term. And the reason for this is because you need a change of vision, a change of leadership. A person who's there for too long tends to again stagnate. Many schools start well, establish themselves, but cannot find the momentum to keep going. Now, I recently came across a book called uh, From Good to Great by Jim Collins. And he looks at a number of reasons why institutions do not grow and why some institutions become great. And he talks about the starting point. The importance is to find out the why we do things. That's the vision. Then he talks about the what we want to do, which is a mission. And he talks lastly about the how we do things, which is the ethical or the value system that a school or, or individuals as teachers develop and build on. Why? So it's why, what, and how. Staying ahead also depends on learning from our mistakes and being open to criticism and the opinion of others. Nothing stalls success or progress more than having a closed mindset. And good schools have many feedback systems at their disposal, from the PTMs and the parent bodies to in school inspections, uh, to belonging, uh, you know, or stringent school standard regulations. Also by arranging for student and teacher exchanges, which leads to a cross-pollination of ideas and a carrying of things that you see from other places into your own school. Staff opinion polls and school ratings are another way that schools can judge themselves. A SWOT analysis done by teachers and, and, and students are another way. Student feedback is also needed as they are the end users. However bad it is to hear these brutal facts, sometimes a school needs to listen to the brutal facts in order to stay ahead. Now, what does it take to stay ahead in the period of COVID? You know, so let's let's look at it from three points. What do kids need to stay ahead in this COVID period? I think the first thing is that children need to make schedules and manage time well. That is the most important thing, time management. The second is I think they need to work on emotional intelligence because the future is unknown. Colleges and jobs are you know, not what they used to be. And therefore, emotional intelligence is very important. Then those who are independent self-starters will thrive in this unstructured environment. There is time now so that because schools are closed, there's no school buses. This is the time that students need to become independent starters. The other thing is they, they have time on their hands to further their other interests, like more research on independent learning. They should ask themselves, what sparks my curiosity? 
Also, students need to um, work remotely and on their own, juggling their time between their lessons, their sports, their part-time jobs, their internships, and their socializing. And lastly, I would advise all students to start engaging in niche interests, learn new languages, new skills, new disciplines. What is my advice to schools and how they can stay ahead? Well, I think all schools need to know their competition. What are the other schools in the area offering? And sometimes it doesn't boil down to competition. It boils down to just doing what others aren't doing. The way Amazon invented drones before anyone else. I mean, they were not bothered about the competition. They just brought drones in. The other thing is that schools need to know the changing needs of their customers which is the parents. What do the parents want? Do they want a new exam system? Do they want more sports? We need to be open to listening to our clients. Thirdly, I think we need, all schools need to expand what they offer. They may do drama and sports and other things, but what else can they open up to and give the children a bigger platter from which to choose from? like blended learning, new forms of digital learning. This is what schools must be thinking about when they reopen. Also, every school has to develop its unique USP. What is this school famous for? What is it offering that others don't? Now, no school can be good at everything, but they must, every school should choose what it's good at and start to work on these areas. They should find out what are they deeply passionate about and what can they be the best in the world at? Also, schools need to form partnerships with other institutions, other associations, like the CBSE schools, the IPSC, the Round Square. Uh, teachers too need to get into groups, subject forum groups, work offline with other teachers. And lastly, I think schools need to market themselves by setting up a communication cell and so they, they can reach out to the world outside. <coughs> Pardon me. Lastly, <coughs> my last slide is how, what are my advice to teachers? How can they stay ahead? <coughs> First of all, academic. I think every teacher needs to work on his subject expertise through his personal study and reading. Classroom management. A, a, a teacher may know his subject, but if his classroom is indisciplined, out of control, or if he doesn't develop a sense of humor. I think it's very important for a good teacher who knows a subject to develop classroom management. Also, to stay modern, to stay, stay relevant through uh, learning new digital savvy techniques. Also pastoral, very important, because a teacher's job doesn't end with teaching a subject and walking home. He also has to be a leader, a mentor, he needs to have com communication skills, empathy, because this is what the modern child needs today. It's much more than just passing exams. Understanding the adolescent psychology. I think all teachers have to spend time in understanding the mind of the adolescent. And also, I think every teacher must spend time in understanding oneself. What are his own personal needs? What are his interests? Is he work? Is he is he loving himself enough? Does he work on himself? What are his magnets? By which I mean, how does he attract children to him? What are his contact points with children? Again, openness to learning. A teacher should be open to feedback, criticisms. He must find the mentor for his own. He should ask teachers to come in and sit in his class and, and give him a feedback on how things are working. There should be this drive to excellence. Again, as I said, Teachers should form study groups, subject forum groups, work in seminars. There should be this drive to becoming the best that we can. Lastly, I think teachers need to work on their unique personality. Every teacher has to work on his. Now, I've just given a few names like uh, terms like humility, trustworthiness, confidentiality, firmness and fairness. But everyone has to choose for himself what, what sort of teacher he is going to be and start working on it. And with that, I hope I have covered or given some sort of a, a baseline on which we can develop. Thank you so much, Shubayu, and over to you. Thank you so much, sir. I think that sets the stage perfectly for the discussion that is to follow. Like every other week, we benefit from have you, 
explain and expound on the topic before everybody else. Well, ladies and gentlemen, with that, it's now time for the next speaker. Our next speaker is Achin Bhattacharya. Achin is the founder and CEO of Notebook. A chartered accountant by training, he was a director at Deloitte prior to starting Notebook. He has worked in India and abroad in various senior capacities in GE, PwC, KPMG, and Deloitte. He has been the recipient of the Indian Achievers Award. Achin is an avid reader and a passionate traveler with keen interests in economics, history, literature, and philosophy. He's a regular speaker at various forums and chambers of commerce, and also contributes articles to numerous publications regularly. He's also on the board of some of the most renowned corporates and contributes significantly to their brand strategies. Ochin, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Shubhai, am I audible? Yeah, Ochin, loud and clear. I once again welcome all of you to today's session. As stated in the report of National Education Commission, set up in 1964, which was popularly known as Kothari Commission, a teacher is entrusted with the job of shaping the future of the country. Thus, social improvement comes from the educator's understanding of the role that they play in cultivating the minds of the new generation and basing their development around improving the future. Thus, with such an important and mammoth responsibility on the shoulders of our esteemed educators, the task is challenging and the need of the hour, especially during these testing times of the pandemic is crucial. With this backdrop, the importance of today's topic is monumental. The discussion today is about unlearning and relearning, about being a keen student throughout life in pursuit of excellence. It's about being flexible and receptive to change. However, before I deliberate further on this, let me extend a very warm welcome to our esteemed panelists. We have a very experienced panel of senior educators today, and I'm sure they'll enlighten all of us with their thoughts and experience. Now, there's no denying the fact that we all aspire to raise the bar and stay ahead of the curve. Continuous professional development is important in all walks of life, be it any profession, right? Most structured professions most of, most of the structured professions have mandatory continuous development, continuous professional development regulations. Being static is synonymous with being stagnant. Classroom discussions cannot be completely immune to various cultural, technological, economic, and global changes that affect us. Does any teacher who aspires to excel at his or her job and wants to fine tune his craft cannot afford to stay completely oblivion to such changes. Being inquisitive is the essence of childhood and teachers, I believe, are the only ones besides parent, of course, whom a child depends on for answers and valued trustworthy advice. Thus, it's important for teachers to be up to date with the ways of the world, even outside the confines of textbook, so as to judiciously guide their students. Education, as we all know, is a constantly evolving field. In, and in order to ensure its continued growth, it is imperative that teachers also evolve alongside it. Every day, new discoveries are made, new information around the world is provided to us, and it is the role of the teachers to introduce their students to all of these new facets. Thus, knowledge upgradation is a must, 
and the teaching community must make sure that it keeps itself abreast of all new developments and pursues the path towards continuous learning and growth. It has become a prerequisite in today's time for educators to constantly refresh their knowledge. With the advancements in technology, the world has in essence become a much bigger place in terms of opportunities in the anvil. And it is the role of teachers to introduce those opportunities to students. Thus education and training of teachers is becoming more and more important. When teachers continuously upgrade themselves and stay ahead of the curve, it tremendously benefits their students. Now, when we say upgradation of teachers, be it in terms of domain knowledge or be it in terms of pedagogy, soft skills, both are equally important. It is really important for us as a nation, for us as a civil society to invest in our teachers. They indeed shape and nurture our next generation. Now, teachers training, continuous upgradation, improves quality of education and learning. It also supports knowledge sharing in the classroom. And what is most important is that the, the, the entire process of being effective, teaching and learning becomes far more effective and increases the teacher's confidence, gives a feeling of empowerment, which definitely helps in performing better. Now coming to technology, Baratsa mentioned some very pertinent points with regard to advent of technology. And indeed it has opened several doors to knowledge which were previously difficult to breach with the younger generation becoming more and more adept at use of technology, teachers today also need to become familiar with using technology in the classroom. The recent pandemic has shown the tremendous potential and above all, the mental resilience of our esteemed educators and has indeed acted as a catalyst in terms of facilitating technology adoption. Thus today, let's take a pledge at this forum to only grow from strength to strength in terms of technology adoption. We will need to not only equip and familiarize ourselves with relevant technology platform, but also be agile enough to continuously upgrade ourselves. This is a continuous process. Now, teachers can definitely improve their professional expertise by expanding their knowledge base and being updated on contemporary topics. It's really important to interact with peer group and share best practices, attending conferences, workshops, webinars, seminars, and symposiums focused on enlightening about latest developments in the field of education. Also activities like publishing research papers, writing articles, contributing to various publications can be of immense help in this regard. Now, when we look at, when we look at the entire topic from a wholesome perspective, I guess it also calls for institutional effort. It is important for any educational institute to encourage and keep track of teachers' personal growth. Besides their routine teaching duties, this can definitely be used as a barometer to assess their development. Betterment of educators will take constant time and effort and only active support from the Institute can ensure it. Now we all know teachers already have a lot in their hands, taking regular classes, lesson plans, role in evaluation process, projects, PTM interactions, and so on. 
we can go on and on however schools will also need to actively encourage and support them on this after all as a civil society we cannot afford to completely sacrifice tomorrow's strategic needs for today's operating needs now there is a very detailed research conducted by us department of education now this was a very detailed research there were 1300 case studies that were picked up the topic of the research was reviewing the evidence on how teachers professional development affect students achievement so what is the correlation between the two teachers professional development and consequentially how are the students being benefited now this report finds that teachers who receive substantial professional development and most cases these were structured learning peer group learning peer group interactions attending seminars conferences workshops now those teachers who on an average spent more than 49 hours the study found out that students achievement like students of those teachers students achievement improved by around 21 percentile points so if teachers if educators are spending more time to upgrade their professional skills teaching skills the study found out that within a year there is a direct impact consequential direct impact in terms of students in performance and that's measurable quantifiable now interestingly this study focused on very systematically half of the study focused on lower elementary grades like kindergarten and first grade and the other half on upper elementary grades like grade 4th 5th so on and so forth now this was a very very detailed study published in peer reviewed journals doctoral decisions done with the help of randomized controlled trials thus it is proved beyond doubt that investment in terms of teachers training in terms of teachers upgradation is really important it really gives substantial dividend not only in the long run but also in medium and short run as well the pertinent question therefore lies in how do we best leverage the opportunities of the new times to deliver quality education to our students and how can teachers better equip themselves with more efficient delivery of lessons to ensure appropriate levels of student engagement now today as we are discussing this question our children are sitting at home facing a computer screen with learning instructions on a handset or mobile a virtual platform that has been unknown to all of them a few months back with the world of information at their disposal they strive to stay engaged for hours with this new system of lesson learning in the process students have also been challenged with acclimatizing themselves with fresh downloading of applications for learning but our esteemed teachers have left no stone unturned to minimize the inconvenience caused to their students teachers are also facing a huge challenge where they are rediscovering themselves each day and overcoming all obstacles the pandemic in its own way has forced all of us to venture out of our comfort zones with some 1.58 billion learners away from school globally which roughly is around 91% of global school going population now undoubtedly an unprecedented situation in the history of education but all of us are so proud that our educators 
have minimized the disruption to the educational ecosystem for ensuring that children do not lose precious learning time and the smile on their lips now i guess this indeed has been a classic case study of staying ahead of the curve of being able to step up to the challenge when required a classic example of being flexible being agile and ensuring optimized learning outcomes i sincerely thank all of you for giving me a patient hearing and i look forward to the views of our esteemed panel on this very relevant topic over to you shubhay thank you achin thank you for that wonderful presentation and ladies and gentlemen it is now time for me to introduce to you the stellar panel that we have lined up for you today today on the panel we have dr s srinivas swami from the doon school in dehradun nature and environment has always been very close to dr srinivas swami which motivated him to pursue two masters degrees one in zoology from barhampur university of odisha and the other in marine biotechnology from andhra university visakhapatnam he also has a bachelor's degree in education to enrich his knowledge he worked extensively on the habitat of olive ridley tur sea turtles along the coast of odisha and submitted his thesis as part of his phd currently he is looking after the cambridge curriculum at the doon school along with transacting learning of biology and environmental studies to students in the age group of 12 to 18 years in the past 21 years of his teaching learning journey dr srinivas has achieved professional expertise in practical and developmental roles teaching through different curricula including international baccalaureate and cambridge international examinations in reputed residential schools to develop his understanding of the new generation of demanding learners in the fast evolving field of education he has undergone training in lay counseling in 2008 and to strengthen and update his understanding in learning he successfully completed the ipgce the international postgraduate certificate in education from the prestigious institute institute of education university college london in 2015 recently for his effort in the field of education he has been nominated for the dedicated teacher award by cup education he is a firm believer of practical based learning and involves students in many science projects he has received citations from the honorable president of india consecutively for two years at national children science congress in 2004 and 2005 for his guidance to students in national level science projects he is a proud recipient of paryavaran dronacharya award given by indian center for wildlife studies in south asian region for his effort in motivating local people to understand the environment with the help of students dr swami has worked as a fellow in fisheries survey of india at mumbai but left the job to join the challenging field of education in 1999 he worked in various states in india regularly researching for solutions on the educational challenges of the 21st century dr swami it's our privilege to have you with us today we also have with us mr subramanya k shripada who is a principal of the delhi public school in duliajan he graduated from the regional college of education in mysore and a post graduation from the same college which is now called the regional institute of education governed by ncert he is net qualified and served as lecturer for one year and has been associated with delhi public schools since 1996 in different positions since 2007 he has been principal where he served dps dimapur dps farakka dps damanjodi and now associated with dps duryajan during this tenure he's had two foreign trips one to colombo sri lanka in 2006 leading a team of students for educational program and second to california us in 2015 as an invitee to attend google science fair he's a practitioner and preacher of sahaj marg now known as heartfulness meditation since 2009 He keeps conducting workshops on behalf of CBSE since 2012, and is the lead collaborator of Duliajan Hub of Learning, and has been appointed as district training coordinator by COE CBSE Guwahati. He keeps special interest in guidance and counselling to all and youth in particular, and keeps all his belief in value education. Sir, privileged to have you with us today. Our third speaker today is Ms. Rita Bhargav. Ma'am, welcome back. We've had you on the panel earlier. She is the founder principal of Maheshwari Public School Pratapnagar Jaipur in Rajasthan. She has a long rich wealth of educational experience with 27 years of teaching tenure. She received the Bhagwan Srinath Samman by Avantika Group Intellectuals for promoting students to participate in essay competition. She was felicitated by Rajasthan Board of Secondary Education 
for contribution in international IT conference. She received the Vivekanand Samman for services in the field of education by Rajasthan Yuva Chhatra Sanstha. She got certificates of honor from various agencies for school's achievements, and she has received appreciation certificates for two years from MHRD for outstanding board result of the school. Ma'am, privileged to have you back on the panel. I would now stop my share and request all the panelists to please switch on their cameras so that we can proceed with the discussion today. Well, a big welcome to all of you. Uh, before we start the discussion on today's topic, if I could go across the table for your opening remarks. Uh, Dr. Swami, if we may start with you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Pray, uh, for the introduction. Um, and uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Athin, thanks to uh, everyone from Notebook uh, for uh, allowing me and you know uh, giving me this opportunity. I'm really honored and privileged. Uh, good evening to everyone. Good evening to Mr. Sripada. Good evening to Ms. Bhargav. And uh, good evening to Mr. Bhargav, with whom I have worked here in the Doom School uh, previously. Uh, interesting is that at uh, this uh, point of time, how we are looking at uh, the education and the system and how we want to take it forward. And uh, the topic staying ahead together for education is a apt you know, topic to discuss uh, on this forum. Uh, for me, the important question always is, uh, why should a student learn? The biggest question is always, uh, is that why one want to learn? What is the need actually? And uh, the second question that follows up is uh, what they should learn. Because the biggest question, so if, we, if one sorts it out, then we are looking at how they could learn and how we can move ahead. And uh, that is the point where the teacher comes in. Otherwise, if you look at the uh, system of learning uh, from, from the ages that we have, uh, we, we, we call it as the Vedic system or the present Victorian education system, whatever it is, it's always the learner who is very important for us. So it's always the learner who used to drive the force. Uh, of course, because of the you know, uh, age of information now, we are saying that they have the information with them. Otherwise, it's always, I mean, it's previously like the information that uh, disseminated from the teacher's point of view or the educator's point of view previously. Uh, let me uh, take you through a couple of slides, then uh, I will, uh, yeah, I'm just sharing my screen. Please bear with me. So what we are looking at now is that the, the disruption that has happened, it, it's not the uh, disruption for the first time. Disruption was always there. We were unable to understand or see it. The disruption, because it is happening worldwide, it, it is actually now seen uh, from all the sides. And uh, based on that, uh, it's a lovely quote uh, from Victor Frank uh, from his book, Man's Search for Meanings, which says that when we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. So this challenge was there for the educators all the time. Once the learner is ready, what they have to learn and how they want to learn, the, the owners come back to the uh, educators. And we always used to you know, keep abreast with the situation, keep abreast with the uh, you know, updating ourselves and moving ahead. Just a second. And uh, this, this uh, quote from Charles Dickens is, uh, uh, you know, uh, strike my mind uh, when I was thinking about this topic, that we are living in the worst of times and the best of times. Now, if you look at the uh, present situation, we all may feel that this is the worst of time because students are not with us, students are not face to face, they're at home. But if we have adopted the uh, technology that we are talking about and adopted the means and, you know, ways of connecting with them, then that is the best of times. Because individually we are available to them. We can talk to them uh, through their well-being, through their, you know, how they want to uh, take it forward. Uh, and not just as a, a, a point of view of an educator, but as a friend, but as a guide, then it can be the best of times as well. So it all depends on both the things, uh, how you look at uh, the situation. But the big question always uh, remains, what will change? henceforth with the present situation and the things that is happening so fast. And uh, what won't change? 
And to me, the biggest thing is that what won't change is the trust factor that a learner associates uh, himself or herself with the educator or the teacher. That trust drives almost everything. That won't, that won't going to be changed. That, that uh, definitely not going to change. And what also will not change is the emotional connect that the teacher generally makes with the student. Uh, I strongly believe it's the connect that drives. Otherwise, if I'm the best teacher, so-called best teacher, I call myself, let's say, uh, as an example, then all the students in my class should have scored 99% or above 90%. Why there are students who are not able to score little, you know, the desired result? Why there are students who are able to score and why there are some who are in the middle? The reason being the connect that is being made with the students. The more the connect I make with the students as an, as an individual, and emotionally I get connected with them, they will do things for me. And that, that's where you know, things may uh, happen much, much uh, smoother or easier. So this is not going to change, whether it is face-to-face, -face, whether it is online, the moment I connect with them properly, things are going to be very, very you know, easy. This is not going to change, of course. The belief in them that yes, this is my uh, teacher who is going to take me through, that is not going to change. The information that is available, that is not going to change. But what will change is the way we interact with them. Of course, it is going to change the way uh, we support them, the way uh, they look at the uh, you know, different uh, information that is available to them, the way we guide them. These are all going to change because of the uh, present situation or the situations to come. Uh, the, the, the situation that we are right now was bound to happen sometime not the way that we are looking at, not the way the pandemic is happening, but definitely it was in a way coming to us. It was just expedited and uh, you know, inadvertently come to us a little faster because of the situation, present situation. Otherwise technology was there as a road roller. Be you want to be on the top of it or you want to get below it, it's up to one person. Uh, I mean, it up to, it's up to the individual who want to you know, look at it. So. My point is, here is that the things that will change definitely is the way we learn and teach now. The virtual learning system, we are call it by blended learning system or asynchronous, synchronous learning system, you name it anyway, but these are going to change. And uh, th this is where we need to uh, look for solutions in terms of what Notebook is providing, of course, I'm glad to see uh, what they're providing. Similarly, what other, uh, you know, uh, internet, uh, uh, you know, uh, sources that are there providing. There are a lot of sources which are available. It's just the application and adoption of the uh, you know, teacher that makes it much more easy and smooth for the uh, learner, basically. And as I said, the trust is the most, most important tool that is going to drive. The moment the student or the you know, learner has got a trust on the, uh, with, the, with the educator, he is going to learn, in fact, Sometimes some of my students come out and say that, so this is what, uh, you know, something new that I have found, which will be useful for the entire class. Now look at the things that is happening. It, it is now kind of a partnership uh, in progress. We, we don't believe in just, I am the one who will be disseminating the course, but it is like giving the onus to them, like Mr. Barrett said, you give the onus to them, because they become the independent learner. They come out with solutions that can suit uh, you know, most of the uh, most of that peer or many of us, and that helps to take it further as well. So these are the things that uh, definitely is going to play around, and building confidence and connection is what uh, you know bring that trust factor between uh, the learner as well as the educator. And of course, through this lockdown period, what uh, what new concepts have you know come up? Does it uh, destroy you if if you are a person who is you know holding your uh, uh, head and thinking that, oh my God, what happened? Then yes, it is going to destroy you. But what I feel is that it should drive you. It should you know, allow you to explore, like what we are saying that the students should explore, looking at the, you know, uh, exploring the needs, exploring your interest, managing your time. So that's what we are thinking that, yes, as an individual, as a teacher, as an edu educator, we also need to drive it and take it forward. And at the, I know at the end, it should define you as an individual. How are you coping up and how are you leading by example so that other students will be following you? Now, 
to sum it up uh, at the end, what I would like to say uh, is that uh, what we see uh, better than others is what will make us different from others. Like what Jonathan Swift's, uh, in Jonathan Swift's words, vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. The way we look at things and the way we want to perceive things and take it forward is going to make the difference between uh, us and others. And that's what is going to make you ahead of others. So be it the change, be, you know, be it uh, embracing new technology, be it understanding the uh, learner in front of you, be it in virtual platform or face-to-face, -face, it's all how you look at things. It's all how are you going to you know, implement those and staying updated. Uh, so that's all uh, from my side. Thank you very much, Vayu, for uh, allowing me to speak. Thank you so much, sir. And that was an absolutely beautiful presentation. I, I am a big fan of presentations myself, being a PPT uh, geek for most of my life. <laughs> that had a few pointers to take away from. Uh, Mr. Shripada, if we can come to you next. Your opening remarks, sir. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Hi. Yes, please. Uh, uh, good evening, everyone. And uh, Mr. Subayu, thanks for the this uh, privilege, what I had, <laughs> what I'm having to address such a learned members and then uh, being a panelist for this discussion. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, coming to the topic, and when this topic has come to me, I have thought it as in terms of teachers only. But when I uh, heard to Mr. Philip, then I could view it in the other direction also. Like uh, it can even from the side of students even. So how, anyway, I shall continue with my presentation. Not uh, uh, till session 2019-20, we used to have traditional schooling, like uh, uh, what is that uh, chalk and talk method maybe, or uh, to little bit uh, going to the laboratory, wherever it is possible, whether it is a social science lab or mathematics lab or science laboratories, and uh, all reasonably good educators, reasonably good teachers, they used to take children to the field trips and all other things. And then, however, we can academically transmit our knowledge to the children. We used to do that. And uh, we proudly say that students listen to only teachers, but not to the parents. And even these parents are teachers, then also they won't listen to them. It's like that. And even my children, my kids, my own kids, they don't listen to me, but they listen to their teachers. It happens. And it is all those things just because of a emotional connection, what they have developed with the teachers. Every individual, they develop certain respect and uh, gratitude and uh, what to say, the emotional link that has been established between the student and teacher, particularly in Indian culture. But now, students are getting exposed to online classes. Now the class, what has been taken by the teacher is also available elsewhere. It is available in YouTube, maybe in different channels it is available. All right, There is a chance for children to learn from that also. And there is a sense of, maybe there is a point of comparison between the how the class has been presented by the teacher and by other members. This is also there. But whatever it is, wherever children see or learn the classes, they lean upon the assistance of the teacher because they have got this emotional touch. And it is somehow I feel that it is time for all of us, like teachers or the educators, to maintain that emotional link with the children. I'm sure that will be established and retained, definitely. All right, so in this race, what we are supposed to do is we need to equip ourselves. 
we need to make our classes so presentable or rather so attractive for the children so that they lean upon us and they eagerly wait for us whether you make it as a flipped classroom double flipped classroom or you uh, you mix it up augmented reality or uh, virtual reality what you do that is immaterial but you need to retain or sustain that emotional link with the children this is one very very important point and we also very well know that on an average if you say student community is technically more advanced than our teacher community this everyone will agree because you see only a limited uh, group of teachers maybe like computer uh, department let us say or to some extent who, those who have got expertise in the uh, what is that computers at their personal level they have learned this computers and then they have got some expertise these people are there that's good but in a larger uh, larger part of the educators or the teachers they are not so techno savvy the generations which are coming now they are acquainted with the smartphones and other things but even they need to learn a lot to be uh, to be what to say to bring out the lessons in a modern way so this is it and teachers need to stay ahead in terms of knowledge you say now also to attract the students to attract the students through our classes there need to be two important points one is teacher must have mastery in his subject his or her subject this is very much essential all right now if we say uh, at the age of 45 or 50 if a teacher is not able to update his knowledge or the new techniques which are coming in the subject itself all right then if he is not able to update the children as uh, dr srinivas has said uh, some of the students might obviously come and uh, say sir this is what i have got the information uh, this might help all our students you please share with everybody all right now at this time collaboration in the collaboration of uh, the things uh, in that what happens even teacher also might be not knowing about this and he is learning it now and he can very well share it with everyone all right that means is not that i am teacher so i know everything this sort of attitude if at all it is there that has to be it has to come down obviously there is no other go and whoever it is it is immaterial that the smaller one or the bigger one in the position in the age there is nothing like that any individual can be a teacher to somebody else any individual all right is something like making every school as a learning organization it it is uh, it is the need of the art now every one would be able to teach any uh, any other person and coming to the with the placement i have uh, uh, actually i thought i have prepared uh, two slides uh, if you permit i would uh, share it with you may I share the slides please surely sir uh, would you need some guidance with that uh, yes as i need i need to share actually i have prepared two questions for audience so I'll, I'll, i'll do that so do you want me to pick up the poll now uh no no i have already shared this with mr yeah, yeah. i just uh, wanted to show that picture so sorry if i may uh, ladies and gentlemen what we are going to do is put up two questions on your screen right now uh, the first question has uh, three options and the second question has three options we'll give you some time read through the answers and do put in your choices uh, sir should we put up the questions now yes please yes sir the question should be on your screens now just two questions three options each get voting the the first question is are you able to see the question 
Yes, sir. The question is on the screens of people. Yes, sir. Yes. The first question is yes. You are in beach along with your beloved one, and you want to have coconut water. Let us say, and which shop do you go? And uh, I have the pictures also. Can you see the pictures? The pictures are same. Uh, sir, I can see your pictures, but uh, I think people who are using their mobile phones might have a difficult time seeing okay. them. Okay. Okay. So, so let me explain this also. The 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 three pictures what I had given. The first one is having a coconut water and chairs to sit, and the second. shop uh, that picture has got only coconut water which is available and the third one has got coconut water chairs to sit and even a light music playing uh, in the background to soothe you okay this is it so in this option which one do you prefer to take hope uh, the question is clear to everyone so here what i mean to say is you see now the uh if you compare our traditional classroom teaching as the only knowledge transaction it is a coconut water alone let us say all right and that one has to be suffixed or prefixed with lot many other things to nurture to maintain the attractiveness of the children to our class at this age and what are those things like the so called light music as personally i prefer to go with the shop c why is it so it is because i have got lot many extra facilities besides the major requirement what i have so the shop c is preferred this is what i think would be uh, uh, what is that everyone would prefer all right so now what are these things like to, sorry sir would you like to see the results ah yes please Okay, I think uh, we've had about two and a half minutes of voting. Thirty-eight people have uh, answered their polls, and these should be the results on your screen now. Ah, uh, yes. Sir. As you expected, ninety-two percent of people prefer shop C. So, ah, so it's that's a it. pretty crowded shop. Ah, that this is what sir. This is because everyone requires the best. Now, everyone obviously requires the best, and if. students are requiring the best we need to equip ourselves in the same way when these children are going to their uh, age of working elsewhere then also they need to they need to be the best if they want to stand aside obviously they need to be the best so equip yourself if it is in terms of teachers at present i can suggest only one thing to them be be a learner be a learner keep on learning the things and technology we can't just keep saying that no 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 i have got a good experience of 20 25 years as a teacher i know how to teach all these things if somebody is keeping on saying like that they keep on saying like that only they remain like that only they won't go with the crowd they cannot go ahead so this is one point and another one also i have a another question uh in which yes another question is also been answered but i am not able to see the yes yes i have got that say here also there are three uh, vehicles uh and vehicle one you see in the first one in the first picture where that coconut water is sold i have kept all the three shops having the same price that is 100 rupees per a coconut all right there i wanted to keep the value as constant but here the second picture what i had given in this one we have three vehicles vehicle one who charges 200 rupees per 20 kilometers technically sound that means it will definitely make you reach the destination the first vehicle but it looks at not so okay whereas the second one they charge 300 rupees and technically sound and will make you reach destination comfortably and we have a vehicle number 3 charges 400 rupees 
20 kilometer per kilometer and then technically sound uh, they provide you the drinking water and fan there is a fan also books to read and wifi to browse and all these facilities are there so once again if you see here also people prefer which one are they preferring you say 50% of them have gone for vehicle 3 as at uh, the poll says here also you see people obviously try for the comfort life more and more facilities all this things they are there all right now at this juncture i need to keep one more thing in teachers uh, i need to suggest something for the teachers or teaching community that is in such a short duration how to learn so many things how it is very difficult to learn so many things if that is the case do something take help of somebody who has done all this exercise in and they are providing it to you they are providing it to you at lesser uh, what to say effort so go for those things when you go for those things obviously you will be able to achieve it because i remember once my psychology professor uh, uh, he was uh, in a he has conducted a test and uh, uh, fortunately or unfortunately i have scored the highest and he wanted uh, me to come in front of everyone and he said this boy has scored very good marks uh, so i strongly believe that this uh, this boy has referred lot many books before writing this before giving this examination that is what he said and my, all my friends have started laughing because everyone knew that i was not having any psychology book and i managed to take only one book from my roommate and i have read only that book in that night just before a day all right then uh, everyone started laughing then uh, the professor got annoyed what is this why are uh, why everyone is laughing then he asked me what did you do how did you prepare then i said uh, sir i am sorry to say but i have read only one book immediately the professor has said that that is too good that book whoever has written that book must have referred minimum of 10 to 15 books this is what he said that means what does it mean that book is written after referring to 10 15 books all right so that much of knowledge is there so go for something which is making everything ready for you and giving and you implement those things and be a role model or be a best teacher for your students this is what uh, i suggest and uh, we must we must change uh, ourselves teachers of course change in the sense we need to be uh, uh, we need to be a learner lifelong learner we keep on saying that we say that but we don't bring it into the practice and uh, the moment we bring it into practice things will become all right and in any case we must be ahead of everyone that is for sure let us bring all this uh, five c's of modern teaching into our uh, what is that classrooms even modern uh, like uh, what is that collaboration and communication and creativity critical thinking and computational thinking all these things when they come into the uh, our classroom definitely everything will happen and i have just one more slide to show and after that uh, uh, i think uh, yes now are you able to see a uh, slide this i have taken from one of the teacher who has given his uh, uh, ted speech from that i had taken there is no wonder there is no wonder in maybe 2 3 years we get a classroom of this sort and while narrating you see this is this is the picture of a same classroom in which is a biology classroom as author says in which at uh, the first one 
some of the students are referring to uh, the video lessons pre recorded video lessons some of the this one the first one they are referring to that to check whatever they have learned is correct or not and in the other corner of the room people are uh, working on some project work the project work they are working and this one so some children are working on a science fair all right and here these two kids they are uh, uh, whatever conducted some they have conducted some uh, what to say uh, evaluation or uh, some polling some poll so that they have collected data and they are checking that data is correct or not is it as per their studies or not and they are trying to link whatever they have learned things which they are going to learn that is it so there is no surprise that the future classrooms would be in this way that means i need mean to say that teachers are going to become a facilitators and facilitators the role of facilitator is much more responsible than the role of teacher the traditional teacher what we had all the days all right and facilitator need to be more what to say more alert and need to have a individual lesson planning individual planning individual planning in the sense every student will get to uh, learn at their pace of learning how they can learn all these things have to be checked into so i guess uh, with this i'll uh, i suppose yes thank you so much sir thank you for that wonderful right uh, yes mr subayu right uh sir if you could stop sharing your screen maybe i could uh, yes yes it is uh, okay come on come on so at the bottom there will be a button called yeah thank you so much right 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 okay. thank you so much sir uh, ms bhargav if i may come to you next your opening thoughts about a teacher needing to stay ahead uh, thank you subayu ji first of all i would like to compliment and rather thank notebook for giving me this opportunity to help me express my views on this relevant topic secondly i would like to compliment notebook once again for picking up this apt topic staying ahead much has already been said on the topic staying ahead for whom for what so i would just focus on one thing and that is we all know this adage wherein we learn that if we teach our children the way we taught yesterday we rob of them tomorrow so this itself speaks volumes about keeping ourselves abreast of everything be it updated be it ahead and here for the teachers especially i would say that when we talk about staying ahead when we talk about their continuous in service professional development honing their skills refining their interest and aptitudes it is that they should rather instead of talking about the number of years that they have as an experience they should rather introspect reflect on what have they achieved so far it is that instead of multiplying years to their credit it should be that they should keep on adding to their experience it should be 1 plus 1 plus 1 wherein they can assess as to what have they added what have they learned what have they added to their experience this year and then next year and so on means they should imagine the starting point of their journey to the culmination point of their journey that would actually keep them always going 
and always on toes to work for their betterment because their betterment and their work upon themselves is very very important today the world expects or the world is expecting a lot from the teacher as it has always been and so we've seen that technology has given comfort to everybody but it has not been able to replace the teacher the teacher is at the center of learning with the learners it is very important that teachers keep themselves updated teachers keep walking ahead of their own selves they compete with their own selves and try to become better and better now let's see what we have in store for all of us thank you thank you so much ma'am uh, before we move ahead with the discussion all three of you have thanked us and let me put this on record it's completely our privilege every week we have absolutely privileged to have seniors like you come on board this platform and we just can't seem to stop with this today is episode 48 and uh, we are we are almost ready to raise the bat so to say dr swami if i may come to you uh, you're talking about the use of internet and how uh, you know the students today have access to their information before they come into the classroom more than the access to the information uh, i i will tell you a, of a of personal experience uh, we were traveling to anjali beach in maharashtra again to watch the olive ridley hurtles turtles hatch and uh, we had reached there the night before we had to get up really early next morning to watch those eggs hatch and one small child that group had a lot of children one small child was holding a phone where they were watching an older video of the eggs of olive ridley turtles hatching does it not rob the student of a sense of wonder because learning to be able to what that yeah that, that's a fantastic <laughs> question subhayu uh, well uh, Uh, there are you know uh, there are two ways to look at it okay one is that uh, the student has the information in his hand right now okay so obviously he will be looking at the you can say youtube video or earlier video and see it and one is the nature in front of him right if the student has got both the things together it it, it is nothing like a wonderful thing to happen because one he has seen something which has happened and he is experiencing something that is happening right in front of him so now the process makes it much more easy for him to get connected yeah this is how it is i have seen and this is how i am realizing it right now and if that connection happens i mean it's a lifelong learning for him he will not forget at any point of time so uh, that that's the fantastic advantage they have uh, having said that the role of a teacher at this point of time is very very you know critical critical in the sense uh, sometimes we are in the you know kind of ocean of knowledge which is uh, there for everyone but at the same time i am the person who is there to guide my you know learner or guide my student uh, to a specific diamond you know direction or specific way to go ahead so if i am uh, looking at uh, the role of a teacher here Uh, with the student having all the information in his hand then i am looking at uh, as a person who is going to either to guide him through because it is it is kind of you know in information bombardment now huge amount of information which one is correct which one is wrong the student is not able to uh, decide uh, this is where the teacher's role comes you know to a big 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 way to support because teacher understands that this is what is required be it for the assessment be it for uh, gaining of knowledge or be it for further studies whatever it is so our role is to guide not to you know stop him from taking information from anywhere not to know something but to guide him which is best suitable at that point at that point of time the second point is to point out the mistakes this is very easy to easy for anyone to just do any mistake or wrong but without realizing it we do that we do that uh, day in day out and our best friends and colleagues are the ones who to, who point at us and say that come on yeah you are doing this one you know not correct or you are doing you should have done it this way so i mean uh, as mr barrett said and uh, as mr uh, sripada and ma'am also has said that it's not that we directly point out the wrong to them but in a way we make them understand that what you are doing is not the perfect thing 
you have to look this thing in a different way and take it forward. So this again is a big, big role of the teacher here. You cannot deny that role uh, from him. Otherwise, knowledge is there. Anyone can go and have the knowledge and say that I'm knowledge rich. You ask me anything I can tell. But how you apply, what mistake you have done or what, what else you could have done or do, uh, do the things that the teacher is going to tell. Also, sometimes the maneuvering and nudging is what is required for the student to move ahead. Sometimes they become complacent. They feel that I know a lot. Why should I learn further? But this is what is required further because the, you know, the world is evolving. Things are evolving. And now, as, as Sir has also said, we are not looking at just the knowledge. We are looking at 21st century skills. And 21st question is there. How you apply that? How you, you know, uh, relate that? How you collaborate with other people, how you respect other people's views as well at the same time tell your point of view. So all these things, when you you know bring it together, that's where the educator, so-called you know, guru, teacher, educator, facilitator, whatever you name it, is the one who needs to you know, guide the student. And that's what uh, is required. And uh, I believe I have answered your uh, you know, question uh, uh, you know, successfully. That's what I think. Absolutely, sir. Uh, if I may come to uh, Ms. Bhargav on this one, uh, ma'am, you have been an educator when this whole internet into the classroom happened. Do you think it's been a more a positive than a negative or how, how do you see the balance? Because everything has pros and cons. Well, if you ask me about the pandemic time, I see that internet has been a boon for both teacher and taught, especially for the teachers because it was rightly pointed out by Mr. Bare that uh, principals had been screaming a lot about uh, the teachers getting tech savvy, but they were more uh, with the blackboard, they were more comfortable with their chalk and duster. But now it is that they have to use technology and they have done very well in this field also. They have come up to our expectations and they have raised the bar of their performance by adopting this change overnight. Huh. As far as students are concerned, well, what I say is that, what I feel is that children earlier were using uh, this uh, net or social sites or sometimes watching or looking at things, whatever was coming their way. But now, we have fixed their attention on something which their teachers want them to do. And earlier when we started, believe me, when we started their classes and all, they used to scribble on the screen. They used to disturb the teacher in between. But when they understood that this is the way that will now, they stopped doing everything. And teachers became comfortable. Students also became comfortable. So that's all from my side. Oh, wonderful, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Sripada, I have a very interesting question for you. Sir, on your uh, psychology exam, if you had access to internet on the previous night, do you think you would have scored as much? No, definitely not. <laughs> that may be because of the age, you say, what? Uh, and it would, it would have been a very difficult task uh, to be focused and search only uh, certain sites. And uh, this is what, uh, as uh, even other panelists also, they were saying, like uh, the teacher has got a very keen and clear role in guiding children to certain, uh, in particular direction, where they, they can assure the uh, required goal is being achieved. That is it. Sir, I'll tell you where I was coming from for that beginning. When you told me the story of reading one book, having been an engineering student myself, we had reduced it to reading specific paragraphs the night before an exam. So okay. yeah, given the internet, that would not have happened. <laughs> right. uh, sir, if I may come to you with my next question. Uh, how do you think we can help our teachers, because there's a lot of teachers on this platform listening in right now, 
what do you think will really help our teachers harness the power of so many tools at their disposal and i know we are guilty of being one of them but right now there are so many tools what helps a teacher to use yes teachers must get into it the basics of these tools at least they should know and they should be able to identify for one particular topic this would be the op to if they are able to so at least to know that the teachers should have a basic or minimum knowledge of all these things and this is what i was saying if the teacher is not able to go to that extent at least he must go for some agency or some unit some third party which is able to do all these exercises and give a chocolate to the person right and that chocolate has to be presented by the person to the students the person is being the teacher that is it. that means if there is a uh, some material which is been already made the so called augmented reality or uh, uh, some pollings are been done somewhere and that is been uh, shown in a smaller presentation if this is there and if teacher is able to handle it in the class rather in his presentation that would obviously help thank you sir uh, dr swami i'll come to you because bharat sir has told us a lot about how in doon school everything is very student focused student led right uh, taking a cue from what uh, mr shripada said do you think you would want a school committee of students and teachers on identifying the most apt ed tech solutions if i may use that word yeah that, again it's a very interesting question uh the the, uh, the point here is uh, what is uh, good and what is uh, required because when you are looking at a tool to be used we are looking at what objective uh, with what objective you are looking at the tool how is it going to be useful to you and the second point is that uh, how user friendly it is uh, because if i have to again you know learn from scratch and you know look at uh, from the beginning then it is going to take a lot of time of mine at this point of time so how user friendly it is and third one is uh, you no know, the content that i am looking for and the most important of all is will i be able to add something from my side so so what is whatever it is there is always a, a good thing to have that's okay but if i cannot uh, modify that according to my need my necessity then i i'm not uh, you know uh, i i don't think that people will be looking at it uh, that way because if it is already content uh, is created then my use is almost gone except for guiding my student on telling that this is what uh, is there you can have a look at it that any anyway, student can enroll and have a look at it but if i can add something that adds much more value to it so this is what the edtech tools are looking at and as you have asked the question if, if it is a student body as well as the teacher together they are looking at it yes i would definitely go for it because student voice is also very important uh, because at, at the end of the day it is their learning and uh, we allow them to uh, express their views but we regulate that we regulate that in certain way that they understand yes uh, what i am what the teacher is saying or what the uh, masters are saying i uh, makes a sense to us and uh, let's work on uh, you know this together i i would like to give an example of uh, what we do um since since this has happened and much before that because of you know think, things going to be paperless uh or, you know to make it more environment friendly most are public uh, of our publications they went digital so when we went digital we were looking at how best we can do it's not just a pdf not just a you know uh, scroll down uh, you know option for any kind of digital platform that we want to use we want to go a little bit something like the kindle type or something like the you know a notebook type where i can just you know flip the flip pages the and pages and do so that's where we had a discussion with the uh, students uh, in the tech council so we have got student body we have got masters we have got the head of the it department so student voice when we heard we we came to know about something called isu i s u u something like that i s s u u something like that it's a, a website or uh, software which allows that to happen you know work 
And we published one of our uh, publications with that. Uh, it's called Scientific Journal. It's called The Echo here in the Dune School. And to our surprise, most of the readers, they like that. Because it's something that they feel it's like a book. At the same time, it is in the virtual screen and uh, user friendly, and they felt it is good. So the voice has come from the students here. We, I, I, I have never uh, learned about that before. When I started working with the students, I came to know, yes, there is something called an issue and I learned. Because they are generation X, Y, and generation Z, whatever you call them. We, are, we belong to a, you know, a time period when the a computer, forget about that, no TV and no, no uh, transistors even uh, to the remotest place. I know Mr. Sripada is from a, you know, head of a school of a Damanjali, that's the place. And uh, sir, let me tell yes, you, yes. I, was, I was brought up in a place which is just 40 kilometers from your uh, place. That's called Kolab Nagar. Okay, okay, right. Kolab Nagar. Very tribal belt, uh, tribal belt of you know, India, uh, I mean, uh, south part of Odisha. So mm -hmm. communication used to reach two days after something has, that has happened. And this is how the situation was. So giving them the opportunity, giving them the uh, onus to bring out things is always a good thing. And uh, that makes more uh, kind of a good feeling and that's where the connection happens. They feel that, yes, they are given the responsibility. They are given something to do. And they come out with much better solutions. That's absolutely wonderful to hear, sir. And yeah, good to you. see the Odisha course correction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was happy to know uh, Mr. Sripada from Diamond And uh, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Uh, Alga, ma'am, if I may come to you, what were your main motivations or main considerations in choosing the technology that your school uses? Okay. Uh, well, in my school, I'm using G Suite for education, wherein we are uh, using the features of uh, Google. And of course, we had also taken up after a trial with uh, other things also, like Zoom, very popular. Then there were features that so we actually conducted a meeting with uh, our teachers and uh, our IT people, then with the management and all, and uh, studied pros and cons of uh, the things before we adopted anything. So it was done this way. Then again, we uh, introduced or we organized one in-house training for our teachers as far as the use of G Suite for education is concerned. And now the teachers are all comfortable they are able to conduct the exams. They are able to say, ask for the documents that the children are submitting. They are even uh, working on this art integrated project that he has uh, asked us to work for. And uh, all of them are preparing wonderful videos, wonderful worksheets, the portfolios. I mean, the, the entire, the, the year seems to be zero as far as the academic content is concerned, but we all are into it like soldiers and uh, we are marching ahead and we are not leaving any stone unturned in our venture and uh, the venture is making students comfortable and showing what we actually are that is showing ourselves from within what is the beauty of the teachers so thank you thank you so much ma'am and last few months that we have uh, been on this journey so, so yes, uh, so I'm sorry to interrupt you. Uh, I would just like to show that, uh, you know, issue one to everyone for uh, the reference, because that that something is very interesting. I'm just sharing my screen. Sure, uh, give me a little time. So, yeah, I, I think, is it is it visible now? Yeah, yeah. it is. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So, so it, it is the, uh, you know, special section of art and science this time. So it's the founders issue we had recently. So when I open this one, it opens like a book. And uh, the editor uh, is a student. Rushil Chaudhary is a student. And then teachers who, are, uh, who work on with them. And I can click on any of these uh, parts once it opens. I can click on this, and it comes out like a different web page and an image. So you can read through what are the uh, things are there. And uh, if I go back and keep on flipping, then I can look at a celestial body. So these are all web embedded and, uh, you know, web pages that is being there like a book, like a, you know, uh, things that is there. 
so that makes it much more uh, interesting to interesting for the students to look at and read they feel that yes this is what uh, you know gives that feel of book and digital at the same time and uh, sometimes uh, there are pointers where we uh, click and want to know something like this so this will give you uh, insight completely so um, th this is the issue that i was uh, talking about uh, and and thank you so much for giving the giving me the opportunity just to add to it just to add to it i have something to uh, share with you all like yes. on the theme of uh, hindi divas actually we had uh, celebrated that hindi week uh, in our school involving the children of other schools and all we had invited their creative uh, work also and uh, the hindi department you can imagine it's not it department that i'm talking about i'm talking about the achievements of the hindi department so hindi department came up with that digital book uh, on and we got it we got it uh, like uh, inaugurated by our guest who came there to speak uh, on hindi uh, divas and uh, believe me it was uh, received by the parents with uh, a lot of enthusiasm and lot of credit uh, to the teachers so thank you really great that is that is so wonderful to hear and we have been we have been part of this journey very closely for the last 5 6 months working with so many schools and having teachers training programs the way teachers in particular have adopted every single possible technology out there uh we there was this interview done uh, i think with satya nadella where he said that all this technology was around this has been around for 15 20 years now but in the last 5 months the degree of adoption that has happened is a phenomenon in tremendous true true absolutely uh ms bhargav if i may come to you for my uh, next question we have we have spoken about the the teachers staying ahead of the learning curve so that they can deliver greater value to the classroom uh, ms bhargav are you there yeah so uh ma'am how can parents and teachers because now that students a lot of students are still learning from home uh there is a still a large chunk of this weight lifting that has been done by the parents so what can parents do and what can how can parents and teachers collaborate to make all of this a reality this is actually very important very important because we are actually partners in education parents and school we are partners in education and parents are the important one of the important stakeholders and we are accountable to them because at as, as it has been pointed out by our speakers today that we have exposure to or we have a lot available in the market it is how we market ourselves will actually decide where will we go and how will we go so what i feel is that uh, a bonding between parents and teachers is very very important and this bonding can only be developed if we understand each other if we develop trust and faith in each other and much to say that teachers have to do a lot for the children parents have entrusted their responsibility with and believe me if at all we feel we feel accountable we act responsible we take a lot of care and and it is at the right time that we share with the parents we involve them we ask them to come meet it actually makes them feel happy and if they are happy with what the school is doing and with the care the school is taking i'm sure they will help you in your journey ahead i do believe that the era today is that of marketing it is how you sell yourself same way how we sell our school what all do we offer how do we offer and biggest publicity that we can rely on is the mouth publicity so it is that we have to keep somehow or the 
the other parents very happy it's not to their interest their desires but it is that we have to bring them on the same platform where we are working here i would just like to give you the example i i'll, I'll share it with my own journey where i am working as the founder principal believe me when my school was started in 2008 the area is on the outskirts of the city and uh, the brand that i was carrying to that area was a huge brand of rather rajasthan or maybe at the national level it is mps huge brand and under the ecms that is the education committee of the maheshwari samaj all committed to education so people were actually watching me very carefully each and every move each and every step how will i make how will i convert this school into mps the name was mps but will i be able to make it mps and today i am rather happy to share it's not self praise self praise is no praise i don't believe in it but i'm just sharing a comment that was given to me by a parent in the very first year i just had a very humble beginning with 319 students and 16 of my teachers but the way we worked and the culture we adopted and we made the parents also adopt and adapt the parents came and complimented me saying ma'am aapne mps to bana diya and i got my reward in the second year from 300 students i got or the strength of my school rose to some 900 students what what was the magic who did it the magic was my system and who did it my parents that is the parents whose children were with me so and since then right from the beginning i have been doing things on my own i meet every parent i take their opinion and you you won't believe it i had floated one feedback form to those parents right in the first year people are generally afraid of doing that but i had done it without any hesitation without any in the very first year and an overwhelming response that i got and since then whatever program i do whatever uh, activities i conduct it is that i get an overwhelming response a wonderful response from the parent community and that is a morale boost for me from where i drink the eternal bliss so i feel that the bonding between parents and teachers is very very important i have taught the skills to my teachers how to handle it. taken elaborate meetings how to do it on ptms and that's how we been able to make a bonding create a bonding with our parents and that has actually given benefit to our system because education is the best investment and you reap rich dividends so as you sow so shall you reap if teachers maintain good relations with their parents parents will in turn respond to whatever they require whatever they desire in the most positive manner thank you thank you so much ma'am uh mr shripad if i may come to you i am going to come at you the in the opposite direction you are a parent yourself and you are a teacher so where do you see this collaboration happening how do the teachers and parents work together from parents point of view from parents point of view so uh, one thing basically i don't know i'm quite uh, impressed with the ma'am rita bhargava what she has shared and it's a it's a relatively different picture uh, for me because uh, handling parents at times is a challenge for us and uh, 
no, wherever I'm not talking about this school, any of the school, all right, because you see, and uh, over a period of this time, what I have learned is when you don't have any expectations out of the track, when you don't have any expectations out of the track, and when you don't have anything to lose, all right, then obviously sincerity and dedication, they come into the picture, obviously. But leading a team, leading a team of, I have nearly 70 teachers with me, all right? And then there are individual differences in the team, all right? And bringing them into a line is a, definitely a difficult task. And uh, in schools where I had worked with the limited groups, all right, there used to be uh, a, what to say, uh, coming to the opinion and uh, rather there were days where uh, in the Dimapur or the other places where we used to discuss what is to be done and then only principal used to take the decision. That means whatever the vision or the mission of the school is being brought from the teachers only. It used to come from there. When it is coming from there, obviously they take the ownership. They take the ownership, they share it, and they strive to achieve it in a uh, stipulated time. Maybe it's uh, five years or 10 years. All right. But as the school grows, and uh, I shall say it's a fortunate if they are maintaining the similar relations, uh, that is quite good. And uh, now coming to the ma'am's point, that is, if we are able to take parents into confidence, whether it is in a positive way or in a negative way, all right, then there is no turning back. School would obviously perform very well, all right? And for this thing, obviously we need to have more and more interactive sessions and all these interactive sessions should be transparent. The whatever conversations they are having it, they need to be transparent. If they are transparent, and you need to say the spade as spade. That's it. If it is that is the case, all right, then I guess things will become all right, definitely. Thank Wonderful, you. sir. I, I saw on your list of schools that you have headed was DPS Farakka. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Saptarshi Roy, who was the director of HR at NTPC, I think was a speaker yes. from our forums, I think in our third or fourth uh, session. All right, right. I remember him telling us, uh, besides this uh, webinar, how DPS Faraka used to face a problem because the teachers were living in the same uh, plant complex as yes. the as the parents were. So you had to treat your neighbor's child a little perhaps dif differently <laughs> than the person who was staying maybe two rows away. Yeah, I know, I know. Yes, that is it. That, and uh, and now, now also the situation is like that then. Right. Now also it is like that. Yes, sir. Dr. Swami, if I may come to you, uh, yeah. you work at a residential school. So until this pandemic hit, the parents were strictly speaking, not a part of your regular teaching learning process. Suddenly they're a big part of your teaching learning process that learning is possibly happening in their bedrooms. Yeah. So uh, even now, or as the students come back, do you see the interaction with parents changing? Uh, see uh, the interaction uh, with parents uh, uh, with the, I mean uh, in the school was almost the same way what is uh, carried now as well. Uh, but what you said is a fact now. Um, the earlier time, uh, as Ma'am has said, we used G Suite from 2013 onwards that time, and that time there was no parental uh, you know uh, entry to the G you know, Google Classroom. Now it is available. You can add as a guardian, or you know that those features are there. It was there a few years back, not not uh, you know that it has recently added. So at that time, individually, department-wise, uh, teachers had added the you know parents' name as a guardian. So whatever uh, things that has been uh, used for uh, your formative assessment that used to go directly to the guardian that time. So that makes uh, made it much easier for the teacher to interact with the parent in terms of whenever the uh, parent-teacher meeting happened. 
so that time to say that yes you also have seen what has happened in the formative assessment part and this is what is being uh, as a learning curve that has happened with your child uh, but now it is much more uh, evident the parent uh, sometimes sits with the child the parent uh, as you said has reached to the parents bedroom or any other place that you can imagine and the parent is watching looking at you over the shoulder of the child they are also looking at how the interaction being uh, done and uh, because they have to keep an eye on the child as well what he is doing whether he is attending the class or entering a chat room or uh, you know so looking just uh, enter the class uh, you know gmeet class or a zoom class and then you know put the mic on mute and put the video on mute and then just started you know talking to somebody else who knows what is he doing and the devices are very much uh, you know within their reach the be it a mobile device or be it a laptop or a pc whatever it is so the parents are always there first we the responsibility or onus are just shifted to them as ma'am has said now you know uh, earlier the onus was entirely us because the student is, is with us for eight months but now during this situation almost 6 to 7 months the student is there so because of that the onus has completely shifted now we want the parents to be accountable for the child's growth or child's development or the child's learning and and we do bring in that issue that yes he is with you and he is being learning from home so what was your role to help him or support him not just providing him with the uh, instruments or the you know system but to support him mentally because the mental well being is a big big challenge right now with lockdown <clears throat> we are blessed to be inside the campus uh, so we didn't feel that effect because we can move around and we are on that bio bubble where we all are safe uh, all the all the teachers who are here but think about the students who are at uh, in in a city inside a flat where uh, a covid patient might be there next door what about him they ha- they have got a small rooms to move you know move around what what is the mental state of the child i mean we can tell so many things but if you look at the mental well being it's a very very challenging situation for them so in those cases how parents are supported this is what the shift in talking has uh, is happening now the initial part of talking is more to do with we giving them a kind of a you know list of things that has been done over a period of time with the child and how he has progressed but now the shift is what the parent is looking at how best we can support them from a distance and what else they can do so that it's a kind of a partners a partnership between the parent and the teacher to see the child's progress so these are the things which are playing out now and uh, we miss them a lot though we uh, feel that they should be back here soon but we miss them a lot but yes uh, the role of teacher parent uh, all are, are you know uh, has gone to a greater height right now wonderful sir i think that's pretty much what we had time for i would ask all of you for your closing st- uh, statements after this wonderful debate uh, if i may have make this request when you are making your closing statements please give one take away for every educator we still have more than 120 teachers watching this one key take away according to you that would be an advice to all other teachers here on how they should be focusing on staying ahead uh, dr swami if we may start with you yeah thank you thank you so much uh, to notebook thank you so much to uh, subayu and uh, the rest of the panelists thank you mr sripada thank you ms varga uh, thank you achin as well as thanks to avishek and mr barrett uh, the one take away i i feel as i started with my you know uh, opening statement is the emotional connect the more we are in uh, connection with our student the more uh, we try to get in touch with them in terms of emotional connection uh they will you know uh, be following you uh, all the time i i would like to uh, end up with uh, one uh, example uh i i am a strong believer uh, in terms of looking at how the learning process has opened, you know happened over a period of time uh because that's uh, based on the need uh and during the vedic system it's the learner who used to choose the guru it's not the guru who used to choose the learner because the need was different that time vocationally if the learner want to do pottery he used to go to the pot maker if the learner wants to do uh, something related to the iron and other things he will go to the blacksmith likewise if one wants to be a scholar they used to go to the guru and you know but the guru used to test before taking them in that's because how much readiness uh, that learner is in 
So let me give you a story. Uh, it's about uh, Charak or Susmit. I'm not so sure about uh, one of them. They went to Dhanvantri for learning about medicine. And uh, Dhanvantri says that do one thing with all my other disciples. You go to the forest and uh, come back only when you uh, find one particular plant or a tree in the forest which is of no medicinal value. They went in. One week, two weeks time, few of the disciples came back. Few months, another uh, few of the disciples came back. Time passed by one year, most of the disciples came back except, except one. They waited. The guru said that, okay, he has gone, don't worry about him. They started all these things, three years, four years, five years. Now they started to you know, uh, worry about his existence, whether he is alive or not. That time they all went in search of that you know, disciple. When they went, they found very deep in the forest or the jungle, he was searching with one particular find. asked, why on earth you didn't return till now? He said, I have not found a single tree yet, which has of no medicinal value. And the Guru said that your learning is done. So what I mean to say is that the Guru tests the learner, the learner is ready to you know, learn. And when that happens, when you get it, get it uh, connected, uh, they will just follow you. They will do it for you. And I know a lot of teachers, including myself, uh, you know, following a specific teacher of mine, uh, for them, I am ready to do whatever I want. It's not for, the, for my learning or for the specific subject. It's the love of the teacher. I am connected with that teacher and I can do anything for that teacher. So my takeaway uh, is that get connected. How you want to get connected? It's up to you because everyone has got a different uh, uh, situation to deal with and you know your uh, learner better. Get connected, they will do the things for you. Wonderful, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Sripada, if we can come to you next, sir. Your closing uh, statement. My, yes, sir. closing statement would be, uh, be a learner. It goes for the teachers more in this situation and uh, it holds as well good for the students even. That is it. For everyone, need to be a learner. That is, keep on learning. Keep on learning. There is no limit for uh, anything. How much ever it is that, we need to learn. That's it. Wonderful advice, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Bhargav. If we can ask you for your closing statements, please. Yeah. I would just urge all the teachers present here to keep refining their tools. They've already got them in their hands. They should keep them refining so that they may make themselves as multifaceted diamonds. There are three kinds of people. Wow, how, and now. People who say wow, they keep appreciating others. People who say how, they keep on just bickering over others' achievements. And people who say now, they are the action takers. So the teachers should be the real action teachers because they are the heroes of this pandemic. The entire world is saluting them. So saluting their services, we wish them happy times ahead. And we wish that they meet their students very soon and continue with their walking off the talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shifadas. Thank you, Dr. Swami. This has been an absolutely fantastic discussion. Immensely enriching for all of us here. And uh, I'm sure everybody who has been present are in awe of all of you as much as I am. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the panel discussion for today. Uh, before I invite Ochin back for the vote of thanks, a few requests. As you know, we are two episodes away from our 50th episode. That promises to be a big one. And we would like your inputs, your advice on what you feel we should do on that day. Uh, we, had, we do have a program lined up, but we would love to have your feedback before we plan uh, what to do on the 50th. With that, ladies and gentlemen, my best wishes to all of you for the Navratri and the upcoming festive season. I will now invite Ochin back for the vote of thanks. Thank you, everyone.
watching over to you. Thank you, Shubhayu. I think we really had a great session. Very enriching, indeed. Mr. Srinivas Swami, I think a very nice presentation to start with. And uh, some very nice thoughts. Indeed, I really liked uh, Jonathan Swift's quote, which says, vision is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. Great quote. In fact, one of his other quotes, which I really find to be very interesting, you know, are very in interesting and uh, with a very deep meaning. He once said, no wise man ever wished to be younger. So <laughs> really, really interesting. So I think, uh, and some very nice thoughts coming in from you, Mr. Swami. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, Mr. Subramaniam Sripada, I'm sure each member in the audience will remember your examples, be it with regard to the coconut water shop that stays with us, or with regard to a great book that you read the night before your exams and, and, and did wonderful. So I think very nice thoughts. And very rightly, uh, you said that a teacher should have mastery over their subjects. That is the essence. That is the core. No denying the fact. Ms. Rita Vargava, really happy to know about Hindi Divas, you know, and the sequence of events. Really great. And I think you very nicely summed up the essence of the evening that educators, esteemed educators need to continuously keep on refining their tools to be multifaceted diamonds. And indeed, our teachers are real action takers whom all of us are so proud of. I think we really had a great session and we look forward to see you in our next session. Best wishes to each one of you for Navratri. Stay safe, take care, and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Kripada, sir, thank you. Right. After Damanjodi ka baat karke thoda yaad dila diya hamare. Good, good. We will be in touch. Definitely. You, sir, I'll, I'll get your number and I'll be in touch. Thank you, Miss Vargha. And uh, it right. was good to hear from you. It, 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 it is wonderful. Right. Mushkar. Okay. Mushkar. Mushkar. Bye, madam. Bye, Rita, ma'am. Bye. Bye. Thank you.